In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. On this joyful Christmas morning, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we are bathed in the new radiance of your incarnate word, the light of faith which illumines our minds may also shine through in our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, the Lord proclaims to the ends of the earth. Say to the daughter Zion, your Savior comes. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you shall be called frequented, a city that is not forsaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, when the kindness and generous love of God our Savior appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ our Savior so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When the angels went away from them to heaven, <clears throat> the shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem to see these things that have taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard of it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all of these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's gospel ends with the beautiful image of the shepherds glorifying and praising God. And we certainly glorify and praise God ourselves on this joyous Christmas morning as we celebrate the birth of Emmanuel, God with us. Christianity is the only world religion that believes that the universal, mysterious, all-powerful, invisible God humbled himself to become one of his own creatures. And we see in the incarnation and birth of Jesus this remarkable infinite mercy of God, that God comes to our rescue from inside our own human experience. And so the whole Christ event is God coming to save us, to break the ancient curse of sin and death and to usher us into uh, the glory of his kingdom. The Gospels attest to an astonishing fact that at the moment of Jesus' death on the cross, the curtain of the temple in Jerusalem was torn in two from top to bottom. What does that mean? Why is that important? Why do the Gospel authors mention it? The curtain separated the Holy of Holies in the temple from the rest of it. And in the original temple, the Holy of Holies contained the Ark of the Covenant, which contained the tablets of the Ten Commandments that Moses had received on Mount Sinai. Only the high priest could go into the Holy of Holies and only once a year on the Day of Atonement to offer sacrifice and incense, um, seeking the pardon of the people's sins. So this was the most sacred spot. When the original temple was destroyed by the Babylonians and the Jewish people returned to Israel to build the new temple, the Holy of Holies in the new temple was empty because the Ark of the Covenant had been lost. So that curtain that separated the Holy of Holies was the separation between God and his people. So the fact that it gets torn at the moment of Jesus' death symbolizes something very profound and important for us. It means that in Jesus, God has torn open every division, overcome every separation, broken down every wall between us and himself. That in Jesus' birth, life, death, and resurrection, he has healed the wound of separation. He has broken the power of sin and death forever. He is completely one with us. And so it's in the church, it's in the sacraments, especially in the Eucharist, that the Lord Jesus continues to be one with us. That we are at no disadvantage in comparison to the shepherds. The shepherds were privileged to adore the Christ child in Bethlehem. We are privileged to um, be at mass, to hear the word of God, uh, to be members of the church, to know that through sanctifying grace, the Lord dwells in our hearts. I mentioned before that the Ark of the Covenant was lost in the Babylonian invasion and never recovered. But there was this prophecy uttered by Jeremiah, and it's recorded in the scripture, that the Ark would be rediscovered at the moment that the Messiah appeared in the world. So think about that in light of the fact that one of Mary's titles 
is Ark of the Covenant. So we can say that just as the Ark contained the tablets, Israel's greatest treasure, so too Mary contained God's greatest treasure, his son. And she appears, the Ark of the Covenant, the Blessed Mother appears and gives birth to Christ into the world. So the prophecy comes true in a way beyond anybody's expectation. The Ark of the Covenant was rediscovered. Mary came into the world and that triggered the advent of the Messiah. Jesus Christ is born for us. So as we look at our lives today, we can often be discouraged by suffering, by sickness, by the death of loved ones, by just the daily struggle of living. Life can wear us down. And there's times we may wonder, is God really close? Is he hearing my prayers? Is my struggle to believe really worth it? Christmas renews our hearts to know that the Lord is always with us, indeed, until the end of time. And that in the joy and the wonder and the power of Christmas, we know that God is truly one with us and has come to dwell within us. Uh, we are involved in a, a three-year process throughout the United States Catholic Church called the Eucharistic Revival. And Eucharistic Revival is, is our whole initiative to, to animate, to catechize, to invite all Catholics to come back to Mass, to grow in their appreciation of the Eucharist. So how profound that the name Bethlehem means house of bread that Jesus Christ was born in a town called House of Bread, and that he is the bread of life, he is the light of the world, he is the way and the truth, he is the Son of God and the Son of Mary, he is our Messiah, he is our Savior and Redeemer, he is our Lord and our brother, and that in him all of our questions are answered, all of our problems find hope, and we are left in absolute wonder today, the wonder of the shepherds, that God could love us so, that he came as an infant, born into this world, born on the fringes of the Roman Empire, to save all of humanity and to break the ancient power of sin and death. St. Therese of Lisieux put it beautifully. She said, a God born so small could only be mercy and love. Today, on behalf of our whole diocese, I, I wish you those greetings of mercy and love, that this Christmas may be a time of deep spiritual renewal in joy, hope, and peace, and that all of us engaged together may see the light of Christ dawning on our hearts, promising us eternal life, offering us forgiveness, restoring our hope, in a world that is often seemingly sad and broken. We live in this world as a new creation because Christ has come to us and has so fallen in love with us that he has chosen to stay until the end of time in this place. For all of that, we give thanks and praise on this Christmas morning. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father of the Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, earth, of all things visible and, and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, ages God, God from God, God life, life from light, true God from true God, true God begotten not made, consubstantial with, with the Father. Father. Through him, him all things were made, made. For us, for us men, men and, and for our salvation, salvation he, came he came down, down from, from heaven, heaven and, by and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. With the hope and confidence that Christmas brings to us, we offer in faith our petitions. On this joyous Christmas day, may Pope Francis, Bishop Donald, and all faith ministers be instruments of the message that Jesus is God from God, light from light, and true God from true God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the message of the angels of peace on earth and goodwill to all peoples be lived by all who govern with authority over others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the birth of Christ to rekindle a new light in the faith lives of each of us and to make our hearts open to welcoming others as the angels and shepherds welcome Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those separated from the ones they love at this time of year, that the child of Bethlehem may draw them into the consoling warmth of his family feast, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That persons with disabilities and or mental health challenges, as well as the dying, the hungry, the suffering, the homeless, and the lonely, may have new hope in the brightness and healing power of the light of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our beloved who have passed from this earthly presence, especially Matthew and Rose Sukawati, the intention of this Mass, that they now live in the heavenly light of Christ in eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this day of Christ's incarnation, in silence, let us now offer to the Lord our personal needs and intentions for our family, friends, and community. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in the wondrous birth of the Word made flesh, the light of your glory has shone upon us. Renew in us faith, hope, and charity that we may live in this world as your new creation and as beloved sons and daughters of your kingdom, one for us in the power of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. May our offerings be worthy, we pray, O Lord, of the mysteries of the Nativity this day, that just as Christ was born a man and also shone forth as God, so these earthly gifts may confer on us what is divine. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the vision, the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer to each other a sign of that peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am, I am not, not worthy, worthy that you should enter, enter under, under my, my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, as we honor with joyful devotion the nativity of your Son, that we may come to know with fullness of faith the hidden depths of this mystery and to love them ever more and more. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ending. Thanks be to God. Our presider for this joyous Eucharistic celebration of Christmas Mass was Bishop Donald Hind, the fifth Bishop of Madison. Monsignor Larry Bakke, the Director of the Apostolate for Persons with Disabilities of the Diocese of Madison and Parochial Administrator of Our Lady Queen of Peace Parish in Madison, was the concelebrant. Our acolytes were Luke Krebs, Joseph Schmissing, and Michael Butler, students from St. Ambrose Academy in Madison. We express appreciation to the following who made the celebration possible. John Sitar, the Diocesan Director of Music and the Diocesan Choir for the Beautiful Music. Sigrid Sitard, who served as cantor. Michael Mills, who served as organist. And Rob Rolfin, who served as trumpeter. Mary Fruits of St. Dennis Parish in Madison, who interpreted the Mass and the closed captioning sponsored by the Apostolate. Both would join our brothers and sisters who are deaf and hard of hearing with us this day of great news, the birth of Christ. The owner, management, and staff of WIC-TV for their generosity and social concern for persons with disabilities of all faiths. Today and every week, and a special thank you to today's camera crew, Mike Van Sustern and Jean Abraham, and the management and staff of Holy Name Heights in Madison who provided the use of the Holy Name Oratory. I am Lorianne Abbott. It was a pleasure to be your lecturer and commentator for this very special ministry of the Apostolate and to share in this Christmas morning Mass with you. I'm a member of Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish in Monona and serve in the Office of Hispanic Ministry for the Diocese of Madison. During this Christmas season, may you be blessed with the spirit of the season, which is peace, the gladness of the season, which is hope, and the heart of the season, which is love. <laughs>